Another look at those fastest five Apple Yard in pole. Mick Lofthouse, Matt Ford Dunn, Jimmy Brown and Chris Palmer. There are 40 riders lining up for this, as I said. And believe me, this is going to be fast and furious. Traditionally, one of the closest contested of the motorcycle classes, the 125cc, everybody but one man is riding a Honda. Uh, the one anomaly in there is a Covas machine, which is a Rotax engine, Spanish built. The revs ride, they all paddle away. Jimmy Brown almost thwarted Chris Palmer there. Mendez, number seven, had a terrific start on the right-hand side of your picture, now in fourth place. But number five, it was Chris Palmer who hit the front, and look at the lead already. Chris Palmer away up the hill towards Druid. Number five lead. Then the number two bike of Lofthouse. Mick Lofthouse in second. Chris Palmer lead. Fernando Mendes is really forcing hard. And Mendes has had a tremendous start. Fernando Mendes up into second place. Yeah, and a really, really bad start for pole position man, Robin Appleyard. He was on the outside, and it's debatable whether that is the best position for pole at Brands Hatch. It's a long way around on the outside, and he had a dreadful start, number 11, Robin Appleyard. I'm sure we're going to see him coming through, but at the moment, he must be down in about 10th or 11th spot. In second place, then, the number seven bike, the pink and yellow machine, very, very bright, Fernando Mendes, the young man with the... Portuguese sounding name from South Africa who now lives Northampton these days lying in fourth place in the championship having scored in every round so far and he rode very well here at Brands Hatch last year I remember through single Dell, straight in the corner out Chris Palmer leads number five Chris Palmer second in the championship with two third places to his credit at Snetterton and Cadwell fifth at Donington and seventh at Alton but just look at Fernando Mendes and these four now, one, two, three, four. You can almost get them all in the back of a transit van as they go on to the straight. Number two, forcing hard, Mick Lofthouse. See, this is hairy this stuff. This is incredible stuff, and there's Slipstream. Mick Lofthouse looking at the outside there, and he looked to be going through, but couldn't quite make it. But with these little machines, 125cc, producing only in about 45 brake horsepower, tiny little engines, but they weigh nothing. And, and he's looking on the inside, number two there, but no. Number five, Chris Palmer keeps that lead, but this is going to be some race. Look at them. There is eight people battling for the lead now. Fourth place, number eight, young Jamie Robinson. So the teenager, 17 years of age, Jamie Robinson, and there he is. Young Jamie Robinson, just ahead of Kevin Morsley, number nine. Robinson is going for third, and Fernando Mendes. Mick Lofthouse, number two, moving up for second. Chris Palmer weaving all over the place. They're climbing, it's like a what swarm of hornets here. They really are going. There are now seven machines, all within 50 metres. And Mick Lof Lofthouse comes through to the front there. Terrific ride. We saw him down that start and finish straight, using every bit of slipstreaming tactics he could, but now the problem he's got, he's the man that's breaking a hole in the air, and the others are going to be trying to get a toe from him, and it makes such a vast difference with these machines. You'll see they're all jostling for, the, for positions, but they need to be in line of stern to get any, any benefit from the slipstreaming system. Race leader now then, Mick Lofthouse. Second place, number seven, Fernando Mendes. Third place, number five, Chris Palmer. Then Jamie Robinson, who has just, in fact, turned 18 years of age, number eight, from Huddersfield, so from the same town as James Whitham. His namesake having won the 750cc race early, earlier here this afternoon, or the first of the superbike legs, shall I say. Jamie Robinson having now to work hard to retain that fourth place. Kevin Mortley, number nine, has just gone past. So this is the battle now for fourth place. Robinson moving up on the inside of Mortley, and Jamie Robinson almost clipped the rear wheel of Kevin Mortley, who chopped across him. This is frantic stuff from the 125s of Brands Hatch. It seems as though They've only got a lap left to do, but believe me, we are not yet at half distance. Well, we're not, but now we see that Robin Appleyard, who had the dreadful start, he's put in the fastest lap of the race, so he's going to be the man that's coming through. He's now in seventh position, and he is charging. But meanwhile, number two, Lofthouse, is leading this race, but I don't think for that long, because number seven is right behind him. Mendes is closing in on him under slipstreaming. Race leader, Mick Lofthouse. In second place, Fernando Mendes. In third place now, it is Robin Appleyard, number 11. So Appleyard 
has more than made up for that dreadful start. He's in third place. Remember, he was pole position man. He was almost half a second quicker than anyone else. He has just gone round and set the fastest lap. And he's in third place with this duo ahead of him. Mendes goes in front. Fernando Mendes, number seven, now leads. Using all the track, Lofthouse fights back. Mick Lofthouse, number two, squeezes ahead again. Winner of the last round and winner of the round before that. And Lofthouse sits on 40 points. There are 20 for the win, 17 for second. Which of these two, if either of them, is going to get the 20 points? Closing now, number 11, Robin Appleyard. But look at Fernando Mendes. Well, Mendes looked for the inside line there, but he wasn't able to do it. The door was closed firmly by Mick Lockout. But now he's going to try around the outside, which isn't normally possible unless he can really get a run in there. But I don't think he'll try for the outside line. Now he breaks up and cuts back in again. Now he gets the chance to get on the power a little earlier, go for the inside line at the bottom. But we have a faller there in the sand trap, the rider perfectly OK. And they're carrying this machine away. I was saying how light the machines are, where you can just pick them up and move them. That's Jamie Robinson, number eight. That's the young man, the 18-year-old from Huddersfield. We saw engaged in that frantic tussle with Maudsley and Robin Appleyard. And a bit of over-exuberance there has put Jamie Robinson in the hedge, but Ryder perfectly OK. Now, Appleyard, number 11, up into second place, having gone past Fernando Mendes. So, very much a man with a mission, the 29-year-old from Keithley, the second-place man I'm talking about, number 11, having ridden for many seasons in the 125cc World Championship right across the world at Grand Prix level and in his own words they kicked him out this year because he said he wasn't going quickly enough and he treats it rather uh, like football divisions he's in Division 2 now but he said believe me I want to get back in Division 1 or the Premier League next year and get back to Grand Prix so if he wins the Heat Super Cup Series that I presume Steve is enough to get him a ticket back in Grand Prix. Well, I would say so, the way he's been cutting through that field, coming up right the way through from about 15th position, he's now in second spot, he's lapped under the lap record, he's about 0.3 of a second under the lap record, he's looking for the inside now as they go to Panic Hill, and he's got it. That front wheel's in there and he's got it. We'll see now if number two, Lockhouse, tries to cut back under and out, break him up into Druids, but I don't know, I think the way Robin Appleyard's riding, that plate can do it, and he decides against it. So number 11 is in the lead, so he's charged through that field, setting a new lap record. The two men you are watching now have had this battle at the last two rounds, which uh, sadly weren't televised by us here on Grandstand. Uh, but I have to tell you that on that occasion, number two, Mick Lofthouse, came out victor on both occasions. Number 11, Robin Appleyard, having to settle for second best. And again, Lofthouse goes ahead of his arch rival in this. The rest of the field still very close, but Appleyard's bike phenomenally quick. His father runs a very successful motorcycle business in Yorkshire, and I, I do suspect that maybe Upper Yard Honda does have some fairly trick parts. Well, I suspect it does, but that was quite strange because we saw Apple Yard's machine quite slow out of the corner, yet very fast at the end of the straight. Now, it's so close here, but it is so critical with these 125 machines to change the gearbox ratios. They have a cassette-type gearbox where you can pull the gearbox out in about 15 minutes. You can change your gear ratios and put it back in, and it is absolutely critical with such a narrow power band that you have the right gear. And you see here the acceleration factor is counting. Mick Lockhouse number two is on the outside. Robin Appleyard tries to clutch in, but he can't do it. So Lockhouse has gone a long way around the outside, accelerating now down over the start and finish straight. Although only 125cc machines, they are doing something in the region of 130 miles an hour. Look at the battle for third place. Fernando Mendes and Kevin Maudsley. Maudsley winner of the first round at Alton Park is in third place, the number nine, 27-year-old from Blackburn, is in third place and pressing Robin Appleyard very hard indeed, allowing Mick Lofthouse just to creep away. Number nine, Kevin Maudsley, right with him, Fernando Mendes, number seven, and these four now are within point three of a second of each other. That's how close it is. We knew it would be, and Maudsley has got the bit between his teeth, number nine. He is going to do his utmost to get past Robin Appleyard, number 11. Mick Lofthouse, meanwhile, has a look over the shoulder just to see what's going on. And Maudsley, very much a man with a mission. Maudsley, a win and a third place to his credit, not having scored in the past two rounds, lying in sixth place in the championship, seventh, seventh place in the championship, with a fair amount of work to do. Kevin Maudsley, then, in third. They've now broken away. Fernando Mendes, number seven, has gone.
but a battle royal here and interestingly the way that number 11 Robin Appleyard came through and now he seems to be struggling he's dropped back into second place now maybe this is tactical maybe he thinks well what's the point in setting a really hot pace and letting everyone chase me I'll just sit here in second spot but it really looks to me like number two Mick Lockhouse is gradually getting away but having said that now Appleyard closing in once again but it is so so critical the slipstreaming situation is coming into play again now the nine here Morsley right beside him but number 11 Appleyard fight is certainly quicker down that section Morsley number nine from Lytham St Anne's in actual fact really pushing hard number seven Mendes who's disappeared from the leaderboard is now running in about seventh place and Maudsley now has elevated himself to second relegating Robin Appleyard so the the world championship runner is now down there in third place and we have a battle between race leader Mick Lofthouse winner of the previous two rounds and Kevin Maudsley who's self-confessed nickname is the Angry Gerbil. Quite why he calls himself the Angry Gerbil remains a bit of a mystery to us, but nonetheless, that's certainly what his nickname is. He's there in second, hard on the front brake, and flicking it in with Robin Appleyard underneath him. Brilliant stuff from these one two fives. Tremendous value for money, a good entertainment, and a cost-effective way to go racing. Yeah, very much so. They're single-cylinder machines. Uh relatively cheap to buy uh, in comparison to some of the bigger bikes but to, and quite cheap to run in actual fact but some terrific racing very very close they're virtually identical it's all down to how weight how heavy the rider is at times and the object of the matter is be as light as you possibly can have a smaller frontal area you'll see their heads are tucked down their shoulders are in get behind that bearing and it can make up to five miles an hour difference if you put, just lift your head up it can slow you that much kevin boards with his team boss and it's uh the man in second place I'm talking about is currently making plans for a 1994 Grand Prix campaign for Maudsley and he had a fairly sensational 19th place in the British Grand Prix. I've got to put that on ice because this is tremendous. Maudsley was off the track. Kevin Maudsley was off the track, the wrong side of the white line. Unbelievably close action from this trio. Down they come to Graham Hill Bend on to the Cooper Strait, along the Cooper Strait, that says it all, Maudsley number nine, very much on the charge, he wants to get past now because he knows Appleyard is breathing down his neck, and I was at the point of saying when they were three abreast at that moment that Maudsley is lining himself up for a full campaign, 19th in the British Grand Prix on basically what was an over-the-counter machine, hopelessly outclassed in terms of machinery, but was almost in the points, so a good result for Kevin Maudsley. He's been shoved back down again, though, to third place by Appleyard, who is extremely determined. Yeah, I'm going to stick my neck on the line here. I think Robin Appleyard is playing with them. He's been looking, he's been passing them. It seems to me it will when he wants to. So it could be that uh, Robin Appleyard, who set that fastest lap in practice, he's just playing around. He's, uh, he's now not really pushing himself that hard. I'm probably going to be completely wrong, but that's my view at this moment. The front row qualifier, uh, young Matthew Ford Dunn, I said was a surprise qualifier. He's still running quite strongly in 11th place, but his form eclipsed, obviously, by the stunning battle you're witnessing now. And they are breaking the lap record quite regularly here. Incredible stuff, and Appleyard has gone in front into Paddock Hill. Ben Maudsley having a look round the outside of Mick Lofthouse, who won't like that one bit. And Kevin Maudsley determined he's gone through on the tail end of Robin Appleyard up towards Druid. And the three of them, Maudsley leaning on Appleyard. Mick Lofthouse has gone in front again. But Maudsley comes off worst. He's still third as they race down the hill. Graham Hill Bend, the left-hander, onto Cooper Strait, up through the gearbox. Again, fourth gear along here. Just touching fifth before they lay it in to the left-hander of 30. Up then, Pilgrim's drop. Mick Lofthouse number two. 25 years of age, Mick Lofthouse and Robin Appleyard. So very much a young man's sport and also a, dare I say, a small man's sport. Yeah, there's no point being six foot three inches tall riding one of these because you wouldn't be in the top ten. Just purely and simply that the frontal area is too big and you'd be too heavy. But uh, I think Robin Appleyard, he, if he is playing with him, he needs to be a little careful because it's getting extremely close at times and could end in tears. So I would say that uh, in the next lap or so, he wants to start thinking about making a break from it if he's going to. Lofthouse from Blackburn then 
just nine, just over nine and a half stone. So that underlines really what Steve Parrish said. Need to be fairly diminutive to tuck in behind the perspex and minimise the wind resistance. You become as one with a motorcycle. And the essence of riding one of these 125 successfully is to keep the momentum going and flowing and don't scrub the power off because it takes a long, long time to recover should you lose momentum. Appleyard goes through again in the lead, having passed Lofthouse. This really is cat and mouse. Kevin Maudsley now on the inside going up to Druid and could well shut the pair of them wide. But no, Appleyard goes wide, Lofthouse back through number two. Maudsley still in third place. I'm really looking forward to the last lap because it's going to be frantic. Well, I'm not sure if I am. I think I'm going to close my eyes because it could be very frantic. There's no doubt. We're on two laps remaining and number two, Kevin Morsey, has tried everything he knows to get away there, but uh, he, uh, he can't make it. So we have Lockhouse pushing hard. They're really going for it. But I still think that number 11, Robin Appleyard, is the man we're going to see cross the line first. Lockhouse. Rides in the Isle of Man quite regularly and was in fact leading the 125 CC TT this year but retired regrettably mechanical problems. So his, his one ambition is really to, to do that. Maudsley number nine. Second, Maudsley goes through Dick Waddell into second place. Appleyard leads. Lofthouse now third. Lofthouse who takes mountain biking as a hobby to keep himself fit for riding the 125 is now in third place he's going to have to deliver something very special could be as Steve Parrish said that Robin Appleyard has got this all nicely calculated but look at Kevin Maudsley number nine Maudsley sweeping around the outside has got and now three abreast over the line Vic Lockhouse is on the inside of Paddock Hill Bend Appleyard does them both on the brakes and Maudsley now and Mick Lockhouse side by side Maudsley going all the way around almost off the track again Hectic stuff, and he's got his nose in front. Kevin Maudsley is in front. Sensational 125cc riding. Is Maudsley on his way then to his second win in this series so far? The penultimate lap. Kevin Maudsley leads. Robin Appleyard having led on and off. They've all had their turn at the front. I'm not going to make any predictions. Steve, how about you? Well, I've already made one. I'm not sure if it's the right one, but I still think the number 11 Robin Appleyard is going to be the man. The next time he comes around, he'll be seeing the last lap board, and that's the time he's going to have to go. But you can see the bike, he has a lot of speed, and he seems to be able to carry that speed, and he's, he's pushed ahead in front again. But up at Druid's Hill Bend, we saw Maudsley go around the outside of him, and I don't think he, that could happen if uh, number 11 Robin Appleyard was pushing it hard. I, it seems to me that he's playing. Well, it's a very brave game he's playing because Maudsley is not a man to treat lightly. Maudsley now has gone through again and look at Mick Lofthouse showing Robin Appleyard his front wheel. So the number two in third place equally determined to make it three in a row if he can. Remember, he won the last or the previous two outings. Appleyard, championship leader and pole position man here, is in second place. Next time round, they get the last lap board and they will then have 2.6 miles remaining. But that bike of Appleyard's is desperately quick in a straight line and he's just illustrated that by going in front again. Kevin Maudsley knows what he's got to do, however, and does it very succinctly as he rockets into the front again up towards Druid. Appleyard got the inside line. Steve, this is thrilling stuff. Yeah, well, this is exactly what I said. Appleyard that time ran into Druid a lot quicker. He didn't allow number nine to pass him around the outside. And so I think now we're going to see Robin Appleyard. If he's going to go, he's going to go. And he's really going to have to get, it, get the hammer down now. This is the crucial point, getting onto this straight, the fastest part of the circuit. They come around here in second gear. They, they rev these machines right the way up to 14,000 RPM rev per minute. And they really are pushing on 135 brake horse, 135 miles an hour for a 125 machine. But there they go, and they're really side by side as they come up to Hawthorne Bend here at 95 miles an hour, they take this corner. Apple Yard leads, number 11, but only just from Kevin Maudsley from Lytham St Anne's, and then Blackburn Base, the number two rider, Mick Lofthouse in third, but Maudsley is very, very determined indeed. Through Dingle Dell Corner. They then come down to the left hander of Sterling and Maudsley, foot off the footrest, just waving his left foot about, is desperate to get past the race leader and take the win here. 
because he's languishing in seventh place in the title and desperately needs the 20 points. Appleyard, however, looking very confident now, but Mortley fighting is on the inside line. Kevin Mortley, can he do it? Almost touched, pushed Appleyard wide, and I think Appleyard got it from Lockout. Mortley had to settle for third, but what a blistering finish to a stunning race. No mistaking the winner, he knows it, we know it, Robin Appleyard. A great result and a good second place, I think, by Lotthouse. I think so, but that was very, very close. I'm not even sure if Robin Appleyard knew how close that was. He really did play that pretty cool, and uh, my man won. Well, Steve, talk us through it. It looked well, as though Maudsley was going to do this. Maudsley was pushing hard, and, and Appleyard there is on the outside, and that would normally be the fast line, but Maudsley just got the slingshot out of there. Number nine, you'll see him getting on. He's drifting out wide. He's trying to get on the fast line. At that point, Appleyard has to pick the machine up, but he's not moving a lot, because he, if he shuts the throttle for a split second, he wouldn't have won the race, and as it was, he won it by half a wheel, if that. What an incredible race, and that was just superb racing. And number two there, really pushing through. Unbelievable stuff. Look at Lofthouse, just pipped Maudsley for second place, but Appleyard got the win. Lofthouse, Maudsley, Jimmy Brown, Fernando Mendes recovered to fifth, and Chris Palmer, he'll be disappointed with sixth. Chris Palmer's sixth place actually prevented Robin Appleyard from wrapping the championship up, so it all goes to the final round at Mallory Park, but Appleyard out there from Palmer, Patrickson, Lofthouse, Fernando Mendes, and Kevin Maudsley, a stunning ride, he's sixth.